Hey folks, David Fine here from Watch Your Lip. We have a small boat, Carolina Skiff, 16 foot, and we wanted to build a center console for our skiff, but we didn't have the money to pay somebody to do it. So with the help of a few friends, uh, the purchase of the right materials, and a whole lot of elbow grease and a whole lot of mess, we built our own center console. So this video series is just going to take you guys through the process. Um, it's a long process. It's a dirty process. We're going to cut through a lot of the little tiny minutia stuff, but give you the basic points on what you need to do to make your own center console. And it came out pretty cool. So uh, check this out, guys. Here's some before and after pictures of our Carolina skiff. Um, we added electronics to it. Those are going to be in that's gonna be in different videos, later videos. But doing the fiberglass work yourself is what this is all about. And first step, guys, is coming up with a plan. And you gotta make sure you know where you're going before you start. Um, we measured and measured and measured and remeasured and thought through and thought. It took months of thinking before actually starting this project. But once we knew where we wanted to go, once I knew what I wanted out of my project, we get, came up with some exact measurements and went and bought our materials. Special thanks to uh, Freddy Martinez, a good friend of ours. He does fabrication work, um, and he's really helped us a lot in getting started with our fiberglass project and couldn't have done it without him. Thanks so much to you, buddy. But let's get started with the project, guys. The first thing you got to do is what are your dimensions? Um, you have to know exactly how big you want your project to be. And we found this uh, starboard cutting top because we don't have a cutting board on our little skiff. So we found this top, got the dimensions of the top, and we figured we would make the center console fit exactly the dimensions of that top. We could take that cutting board on and off and use the inside for dry storage and to house our battery, deep cycle battery, and our electronics and stuff like that. To keep a, a nice dry place for some storage of uh, sensitive items and our electronics. So. All right, the first step in making our new box, our console, if you would call it that, is we got we have the dimensions, we know how big we want it. And basically what I did was I ordered this 30 inch by I think it's a 22 inch fillet board, it's a cutting board. Uh, I got that cut to size, the, the corners are rounded already. And what I'm going to do is, this is going to be literally the top of my box. And so the dimensions are going to be exactly the same size as this. And so now what we're going to do is we have our, um, our marine foam. And we're literally going to cut it the same dimensions as our fillet board. This is the thick stuff. This is like an inch and a half thick uh, here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this as the base, the flooring. We're going to fiberglass this to our uh, to our deck. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. And I'm just going to cut the exact dimensions of this board here. And now I'm just going to cut through and we'll start with the walls. Next step was to go find our uh, three quarter inch um, foam that is specifically made for fiberglass work and had to cut it into to, to size, which was interesting. Here's what we did with that. Okay guys, this is gonna be the first glimpses or ideas about how our new console box is gonna look. But Livewell's here, fillet board top which will come out this will all be dry storage here i'm going to move these rod holders and i'm going to put them on the front here there'll be some rod holders rod holder space in the front i'll probably put some a fillet knife sheath right here so when we're filleting we can just put our knives in on the side maybe I'm probably going to extend this out a little bit um have the electrical panel here and I can literally a dashboard with our electrical panel with our switches. You can see the side over here is pretty wide for people to walk through. There's plenty of room to maneuver around in here. Guys, in that box, I'll be able to store a bucket with my cast nets, my tackle boxes, 
and all that stuff. So it's about time to start glassing this thing and uh, and get it get it solid. And I just wanted to see what it looked like and kind of get an idea of what what we're going to be working with in the future. Once we cut our pieces of our foam to size, put them in the right place, we used hot glue to hold them in place uh, and then sanded the edges uh, to make it the exact shape that we wanted our Sonar console box to be. Now it's time for some fiberglass work, guys. Um, let's get to it. We're gonna explain it as we go. So we're getting our stuff. Fiberglass Coatings, Inc. One and a half. One and a half. Mm -hmm. Got it. Bam. That's the good stuff, huh? The least expensive yeah, stuff? Well, uh oh. Renzo, what you got there? Roller. Roller, you know what that's for? Yes. What's it for? Yeah, the bubbles out. When you gotta get the bubbles out. We figured I would give you guys a quick glimpse of what we are buying. This is a five gallon pail of this boatyard polyester laminating resin. Um, got a five gallon pail of that. This is the additive that we put in it to make it harden. It's the hardener, organic peroxide as kind of interesting. Um, we're rolling it on with just a normal paint roller, guys, but make sure you get the the uh, rollers that are designed for epoxy. Um, we got those, and Freddie's got this really cool little rolling squeegee thing that he gets the air bubbles out from under the epoxy when we get it going. So I just figured I would give you guys a quick preview as to what we are using. All right, Freddie's measuring out our glass here. I can't believe this is what our boat's made out of. It looks so thin and pathetic. Thin and pathetic? <laughs> thin and pathetic. Hey, man. The good stuff. So we're measuring out the glass. To cover one side, two sides. So now, now we can... go here. So the other thing is that this edge isn't is rounded off. Okay, we're gonna have to round this off a little bit more. A little more. What's gonna happen is this is gonna bulge and it's gonna create their pockets. Hmm. They're not rounded off enough. <laughs> yeah. Got it. You can see by just the way the material is laying there, how it kind of like lifts up. Even if we wet it, we're gonna constantly fight it, fight it, fight it, and it's gonna end up one or two, you're gonna have bubbles. Got Either it. on this corner or the other corner. Rounding the edges. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, boy. Put your elbows into it. <laughs> Guys, we're using number 40 grit sandpaper. So actually, since we have a little overhand, we'll probably go, go over here like three inches. Yeah. You want this to cover it, all right? Yeah, but remember, since we're laying the other side, then this yeah, can wrap this gap here. Yeah. One way or another, we have to cut a straight, strike a straight line here. Got it. <clears throat> okay, hold the top. No, it should, it should be fine. My man, dumping resin. Tell me as I'm getting close. Yes, sir. It's got to be precise measurements, right? You're halfway there. <laughs> 56, 64. Yeah? Bad chemist does his thing. So what you want to do is for every quart, you put 15 cc's of hardener. 15 cc's of That's hardener. That's normal. Now, since it's a little bit colder, I'm going to 20 cc's. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be about 50 degrees tonight. No, it should dry before it drops okay. that low. But. Got it. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna put a quart. Whatever the quart is right here. Okay, so that won't harden until you put this stuff in it. Right. Yeah. Got it. All right, so we got a quart. Oh, Freddie the what? mad, Freddie the mad chemist. <laughs> All right, now we're on the clock, y'all. On the clock. Oh, we're on the clock, yeah. We're on the clock once I'm done mixing it. All right. Yeah, you have to like work fast. 
<laughs> you gotta, you gotta you move a little bit. Got it. But you are on a bump. You can't go and like have dinner. Christian's ready to go. Let's go, man. He's got his roller. We've got our thing to brace this up so that it holds it. All right, here we go. Putting the fiberglass on, you just cover the box in resin. Make sure. Try to you guys gotta go towards you. So this is all, all that's all you do. You, you wet it, you mat it, and then you keep wet. Okay. Just like that, huh? Yeah, but you gotta make sure it's nice to wet none of that white stuff. It's you want that like matted down. Mat it down and you see it, it almost becomes transparent. Dave, when you mix the resin, yes. don't mix up a lot at once because you have the same cloth. So it's okay if you mix different batches okay. and tie it in together over there. That's fine. It's going to be sure the same. Okay. So you don't want to mix too much because then it'll get gooey. You can use it. Yeah, you got to throw it away. Like got it. it. You're wasting it. Okay. So I do a quarter of the time. A quarter at a time. Yeah, it might take a little longer, but you'll use less resin. And how much for a quart? How much of that stuff? Do, the harder. Sixteen cc's. Sixteen cc's. See, so ideally, you want it to be like this area yeah. over here. Yeah. And how do you get all those wrinkles out? How does uh, that work? Keep wetting it. Roller. Keep wetting it. Yeah, but at the end, once we lay the other one, we'll use this roller and we'll roll the air bubbles out. Got it. You fancy man. <laughs> fancy, Chris? That that never happened with your stuff. <laughs> Chris, you're killing me, bro. So what I was telling you, see how you got all these little squares? Yes. If that's on the inside, you'll never you'll see You'll never that. see that. Now here, then we will do our best to try to get the air bubbles out, but you might have some air bubbles, or you might have like little cubes that you just have to body work to get them out. So from now on, the squares go on the inside? On the inside, yeah. Got it. So these, so these little air pockets, you want to get those out, is that correct? Yeah. But what's going to help too is once we lay the other one, we put more resin, it's going to seep through and then as we squeeze, it'll get the air out. You'll be able to see it even though- Are we, we doing the other one today? No. We got to- We got to do two sides here and then do the other side. Oh, so we're going to literally put two two things on the same side. Correct. Right on top of each other while yeah. it's still wet. Yes. Got it. Got it. This is like inch, it's called inch and a quarter or uh, 1.5 weight. 1.5 weight fiberglass? Yeah, it's a little bit thicker than the other stuff. This. Doesn't give you structural strength, but what for what you're using it for, which is just a box, yeah. it's gonna be plenty strong. You Got know it. what I mean? Now uh, you don't want to just put this two pieces of mat on your transom because that's gonna be weak. You would have to use. What about what about for like the the front deck uh, of the platform? Even that, you would do two, and then you would do another uh, material, seventeen weight, okay, which is more woven. Okay. This is more just like zigzags. So, actually so for when we do that, squares. we're gonna need to get some other stuff. Yeah, a okay. little more stronger. Stuff. Got it. Or we do a lot more of this, but sometimes that's not cost effective. Got it. Because you have to use a lot more resin and a lot more mat. Got it. And you have more weight. Well, that's why it's nice to have somebody who knows what the heck they're talking about. <laughs> I pretend that I know what I'm talking about. You sound good. <laughs> uh, I can sell you a used car. Don't, don't you worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good, man. What we'll do is once we lay the other one, we'll cut, cut, it, out. cut it off. Just cut this bottom. Yeah, so that bottom will strip. Any Compare me so we'll cut it a, a little bit shorter. Here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Could you, son? Can you get a garbage bag? Oh, you just want to cut it out. Okay. Yeah. So now we're just going to cut. We're going to cut this because it's, it's going to create air pocket here. Yeah. So we'll fill it with some putty after. Literally, we are putting our second layer of fiberglass down. No First one's down. Let it go yeah, just let it go. First one's down, and Chris is gobbing up the second layer of fiberglass. Boot. Okay, what do we got here now, Fred? So you see how there's air bubbles, like a little bit lighter color? All those are air bubbles. The lighter so, color stuff is all so air bubbles. So I'm doing is trying to squeeze that stuff out. All right. So that way we have a good bond between the layers. Got it. Any bubbles is going to create weakness. Bubbles, no bueno. No bubbles, bueno. no bueno. Got it. No bubbly bubbly, no bubbly for bubbly. our fiberglass work. So since your boat has this texture, yep. I say don't body work it. 
I would leave it like that and paint it and then do the splatter so okay. it blends in with the boat. That's okay. my opinion. Now, if you want to make it like glass, you have to <laughs> call, uh, sand it, bodywork it, and then with the gel Well, coat, the, the rest of my boat kind of looks like this already, right? Right, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It looked like it was part of the boat. Got it. And you're creating less work for you. Less work is better. More. Priscilla, you know, as nice as she is, she's really not pretty. She's more of like a, she's like more like a, a meat wagon. She's like, let's go kill some fish. <laughs> let's go kill something. Let's get some blood on this deck. Ringtone in the half right there. Tie this into the seam because it's kind of lifting up to help squish it down. So this is frayed on purpose. Yeah, so it's frayed. So now these little hairs are going to mix in with the regular hairs that are there. Yeah. So you won't see so much of a defining like if it was a straight edge. Got it. Fred, your ringtone, is that like yeah, reminiscent? Yeah, to go home. <laughs> oh, is that what that is? Yeah, my, my, my wife's gonna kill me. That's my wife's gonna kill <laughs> me up, ringtone? Fred. Don't touch it, buddy. Yeah. So you I do the same thing here in the center, do like two inch by two inch, like a four inch strip, you fray it, and you're gonna, you know, once you have the pieces in here, you're gonna lay that around the corner, and with this, uh, so that, that's it roller, for the, you're gonna get dry. really in the corners and squeeze to get all the air pockets out. Got it. Until it dries, that's it, right? Yeah. So are we gonna do this on our own next couple? We're gonna have to. We're gonna do. That's yeah. the exciting part, man. I mean, if you want, I would wait till tomorrow. Just let this dry. Yeah. And just do the other one tomorrow. Because what you could do is, once you lay it out. Yeah. And if it's a sunny day, after like half an hour, you can put it on the sun. It'll help cure it a little bit faster, and you can move on to the inside. Okay. So to cut your, your drying time significantly. So now it's basically this side and this side that need the next the next coat. Correct. And so basically what I need to do is just cut. The cut. Same, thing, same thing we did here, you're gonna replicate on the other side. Here, since we overlapped it a little bit, I would just go a little bit further that way, fray it so it blends in. Do the same thing. So it's gonna it's gonna overlap here, fray it, wrap it, so then and it wraps right around this corner. Right. And, and then fray this side? Correct, and, and wrap it around. And wrap it around. Now here you might have to sand a little bit since it's hanging out a little bit. So it's you know rounded off again. Okay. Uh, either with a sander or... You can actually, when it's still tacky, you can grab a sharp blade and cut it. It'll okay. It'll let you cut it. Okay. Um, but if it's still a little wet, where when you pull, it's starting to pull, don't touch it yet because you're going to make... Yeah, I won't, I won't touch it. I, so, so we're going to... So this thing, we're going to do the inside we're just gonna cut that square, mm -hmm. lay it down, glass it, put the next one down, uh, resin that. Then do the other side. Then once that dries. Once you have all the sides, then you do, do the, the seams. seams. Then we do the seams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that way Got everything's it. even. All right. Once you have this one stuck on, it's gonna stick. It's not gonna fall off because it's not that heavy. Got it. So you, you can just turn it, do this side, turn it, do the other side. So you side. can do them all at the same same time, like one, two, yeah. and then like let it, then maybe let it sit for a few and then turn it do the next side no don't let it set it just keep going just keep going just keep going as soon as you got this squared away move on to the so next so side. once this is on top it's not going to fall i wouldn't do the top are you saying do the top it, it, of the, it, it won't thing? fall it won't either what okay. you can do is lay this for the bottom down so that way you can do the bottom i would do the bottom first okay and then do the sides and leave it like that as you glue it got it got it I'm so <laughs> you, you want to try and do this on our own next time I want to try, but Christian's always like right there, right from here. <laughs> Bro, we can't rely on Christian and Freddie all the time, man. We gotta, we gotta get into it, okay, man. Okay, guys. So next step, I gotta sand, or actually grind, all of these loose edges off. Get all this extra fiberglass off. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of like all over the place here. I gotta get all that stuff off with the grinder. And that can be kind of messy, so uh, they're telling me <laughs> try to uh, have uh, sunglasses, don't try to cover your face, long sleeves, gloves, pants, because it's gonna get messy, so here we go. Look. I know, it's you. Is it harder because it's like actually yeah. sticks out? It's hard as, hard as a rock.
Uh. All right, guys, it's time now to put our fiberglass on these two sides. And so what I'm gonna do is um, we're going to, we've, we've sanded this nice, we've sanded this all down, nice and smooth, nice and round. And now what we're gonna do is the distance is gonna be 28 inches, which is about two inches wrapped around the side here. This, this is actually the bottom of the thing of the box. So it's going to be two inches. We're going to fray that and we're going to wrap it around and it's going to come right up to the edge. We're measuring it very, very specifically right to the edge of the top of the box. And it's going to be 48 inches from here. We're going to start here and we're going to blend this in and we're going to wrap it all the way across this side, around this corner and down. And we're going to cut it so that it's right here even with this edge because we've got some fraying that has been, uh, we've got the other piece that we did yesterday wrapped around this corner so it's right here. So we're just gonna blend this piece right to the edge here and we'll blend that right in and that should be good. Guys, I've already measured out my first sheet of fiberglass and I'm about to cut it right here. And once I cut it, I'll go measure up my other sheet We'll make sure that it's good. We'll make sure that it, we'll, we'll line it up on our box, make sure we're good. And then we're gonna start to put our resin in. All right, folks, I'm actually very proud of myself and quite relieved. I don't see a whole lot of air pockets. This is gonna be a success, at least for the first time ever doing a fiberglass project. I am very, very proud of myself. Uh, there are some minor air pockets right here on the edges, which Freddie says is a little, little moment of weakness, but this isn't, really like part of your hull or anything this is just a box console box so it should be should be fine they're very minimal and if if this is not good enough then that will have taught myself never to do fiberglass without somebody here who knows what they're doing but i think we're gonna be good guys so now it's time to just let this bad boy dry and while it is drying um you know i still have to just like we did before, trim all this stuff off and then sand it down. So the next step is we got to glass the inside and I'm going to try and do this all in one day, guys. So this takes a couple hours to dry totally. And what we're going to do is while this is drying, we're actually going to cut squares, one for the bottom all the way across, which is 27 and a half by 16, I think it is. And then we'll measure which we already did actually, by the way, I've got two fiberglass sheets I've already cut for the bottom. And then we're going to do, cut the same ones for the sides. So we'll cut two for the bottom, two sheets of fiberglass for each of the sides. And we'll cut those and have them all pre-cut and ready to go so that when this is dry, we can shave this off, sand it down, and we can start fiberglass in the inside of this bad boy as well. I'm going to try and get this whole thing done in one day.
All right, guys, so we just sanded down this edge right here. It's nice and solid, nice and firm, no bubbles anymore. And it's time to lay all of our strips down on top for the final edge. We've got our stuff mixed. So for the our resin mixed with the hardener, and we are on the clock because we only got about 15, 20 minutes before this all hardens. So now the job is make sure it's not too runny. But the first thing we gotta do is, is make sure there's a good layer on the top. I'm gonna just go ahead and do this all the way around. And we are about done with that. We'll start with a short strip, which is gonna go along one of these short edges. I'm gonna lay this down. And these are specifically measured to be exact, the exact measurement of the diameter of this thing. And we are actually gonna put four layers of this on top, one right after another, guys. All right, it's layer number one, guys. Now it's time to get some resin on top and get them all melted in. Guys, I really have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I'm just following some instructions over it. Looks like it's done. Uh, I got four layers of, or four little strips on each of these edges. And I put them one right after another, right on top of each other. So they are drying right now in the sun. I, you know, like there's a few places like right here where there looks like there's a few little air pockets. So I think it's too late right now to really fix it now. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to wait until this dries. We'll, we'll file these rough edges off and sand, and hopefully we have some nice, sturdy edges. Um, this, this part here is my mo main concern because this is the edge that was uh, had the, the bubbling on the inside, which made us have to do surgery on it. And, and this happens to be the same place where it seems to be that there's a few little bubbles on this top part right here but we're gonna see what we can do to get that going. So guys, once this starts to cure, there's really not a whole lot of manipulating that you can do now. It's starting to get gummy. Uh, it's a little cooler today, so it's probably taking a little longer than normal. And I'm sure tomorrow we will be sanding and uh, shaving, and we'll see if we gotta do any little All right, folks, so I am done grinding off this uh, edges of our box and then sanding all the edges. So now basically what I'm left with is there are some places like right here where there is no fiberglass or it was very minimal. Uh, and there's a couple couple edges over here that I'm not super super crazy about so what I'm gonna do yeah you know, like I, you can see right here I mean the gap in between this fiberglass piece and that fiberglass piece is literally like a millimeter so what I'm gonna do is I am going to mix some resin and I'm going to just glob it in here and allow gravity to kind of ooze it into the cracks, kind of make it, let it seal that resin in there nice and thick so that it bonds everything and hardens where there's no gaps where 
air and water can get in. So uh, that's the plan for now. And I think at that point we will be done with our box. Building. There's Priscilla out there on the water. She's probably sitting up there waiting her new console. Guys, we are coming into the next phase of developing our box. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of show you where we're at. So we have our console box, which is hard as a rock, guys. And I've got this nice starboard fillet board on top for a top and we have it attached by these cooler latches which we're going to eventually bolt into the side here once we get it painted the the part where we're at now is this is our box extension that we are going to mount on the front so if you were to look at it i penciled in kind of what it will look like this is where the box extension will come out right about here and it'll stick out 10 inches stick out about that far come down and it'll go down to here. And then there's gonna be a drain hole right in here just in case water ever gets in. I have weather stripping, so this will be airtight. It's gonna form a shelf right here. And on top of that shelf, will go our Garmin fish finder. Okay, and our little cup holder and we'll put some different things in there as our VHF radio. The console extension is going to house a tackle box unit We've got that going and it will house our switch panel electrical switches and what we're also going to do is we are going to cut out a dry storage thing right here we'll see if i can get it cut out nicely with the door so that i can have it on hinges or i can just open it like this we'll see how that works move the top off all right so now as you can see there's no paint on this yet we're waiting to make this one piece so that uh, we can paint it after it's all one piece and get it all sanded down nice. I hope you enjoyed the journey of phase one of our project. Uh, we've got a little bit more work to do. We're gonna install the box. We're gonna put some electronics on it. We're gonna add a tackle box to it uh, and that kind of stuff. But uh, phase one, hope you learned something. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, guys, watch your lip and let's get creative. Bye now.